السلام عليكم ورحمة الله الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وكنتين إن شاء الله تعالى the talk about the level of الإنابة الإنابة from the book of مدارج السالكين بابن القيم رحمه الله and as we heard before الإنابة is to return to Allah سبحانه وتعالى and to stay in that state of return and that anything that takes the person away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, is to be repented from for a person to be always in that state of return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it's the consistency of the tawbah till it becomes the norm of the person and as we heard before that it's two inaba, two types one to the rububiyyah of Allah that everybody uh, will return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because he's the lord of the alameen and there is the inaba to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by the believers. This is where they choose to return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this life with uh, worshipping him alone, with the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, with worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. And uh, also was mentioned that it's uh, three things. To return to the truth, to the haqq, by rectifying it. The same way that you would when you were returning or when a person returns, they turns with اعتذاراً or regretful, apologizing, acknowledging the, the sin. And the second thing is to return وفاءً, to be faithful. When you return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the same way that you return because of the covenant with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we talked about these two before. Uh, the third one, which is uh, إليه حالا كما رجعت إليه إجابة. This is what Ibn al-Qayyim رحمه الله says, describing actually the words of Imam al-Harawi, that to return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala حالا. Al-hal is the state that a person is in. Uh, the same way that you return to him إجابة as a result of being called, so you responded to the call. Which means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called you and the reason why I'm saying you like this, this is how Ibn Qayyim rahimahullah, he writes his book. He addresses the reader. So uh, it's like we need to address ourselves with these types of statements. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called you to repent to him, called you to worship him alone, called you to repent. So you accepted and responded to this call from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whether it's by labbayka wa sa'dayk, here I am, O Allah, uh, whether it's with speech, so that has to be a respond with al-hal, with your your state of, of mind and state of actions, not just in speech, so that the speech is is uh, is made uh, truthful by one's actions. Because as he says, which is a very important statement, فَإِنَّ الْأَحْوَالَ تُصَدِّقُ الْأَقْوَالَ أَوْ تُكَذِّبُهَا Al-ahwal. Al-ahwal is the state that a person is in, uh, whether it makes the what the words of a person truthful or not, whether he's saying the truth or not. So if someone says, uh, Astaghfirullah wa atubu ilayh, well, this is a speech. This is a word that a person say. Is he truthful in, in whatever he said? Is he truly re, you know, repenting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And this is a huge subject because this is every word that we say in our ibadah, in our dhikr, in our Salah. Uh, so uh, if a person starts the Salah and says, الذي فطر السماوات والأرض, I, I make my face and my heart towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Are you really? Or are you just uh, saying it? So uh, the, to return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the real sense of truthfulness, not just with one's words. And every speech, uh, every statement that we make, uh, for it to be true or not, there's a, a witness or a, a dalil or an evidence. And the evidence is the hal, is the state of the person. So uh, this is in anything that we say. And that's why if we want to change ourselves or even change the world, we need to make sure that what we say is according to our actions and what's in our hearts and and everything is on the same pace, everything is, is upon truthfulness. So basically, al-inaba to Allah, to return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is since a person accepted the call from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with one's speech, then return also to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with one's hal or with one's 
ستيت uh, الحسن البصري uh, رحمه الله he said uh, ابن آدم أو son of آدم لك قول وعمل you have speech and action وعملك أولى بك من قولك and your action has more rights to you than your speech ولك سريرة وعلنية and you have سريرة سر you have secret and you have openly uh, done actions وسريرتك أملك بك من علانيتك and your secrets your inside actions your deeds done by your heart and your belief in your heart and so on is more uh, أملك بك more it's more have an ownership to you this is really you more than your openly done actions and it doesn't mean to belittle the openly done actions because of the actions the physical actions are wrong or upon sin that means the secrets or the inward actions are uh, you know wrong too this is because of the inside of the heart of is if, if if it's upon righteousness the actions will be upon righteousness But if the speech is perfect and the actions are perfect physically, Allah knows best what's in the hearts. So this is basically what it means. And we are basically speech and actions. We say things and we act. So our actions is the, the sign of the truthfulness of our speech. So if the speech is, is correct, and usually the word speech is not just the speech of the tongue, but also what uh, what's in the hearts of the person has to be translated into actions to, full, to fulfill the submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is a very serious matter of having this inaba to return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, and to correct our state of actions and state of our hearts and and to uh, make sure that the inward and the outward actions are in the same uh, way. Then after that, he talks about something uh, which is in the subject of al inaba Ar-Ruju'a ila Allah, which is to, to have inaba to return to Allah. Because this is was something mentioned in the beginning with regards to Al-Inaba, that it's uh, to return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in, in all different uh, means. Uh, so with the love of Allah, with the khudu' to submit oneself to Allah, to go forward, to turn away from anything other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So to return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, islahan, how to rectify our own selves, he says is by three things. Right, three things to uh, make us return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the righteous way. And I hope that we write these things, we we keep it in our hearts and our minds to be persistent in applying it. The first one, he says, Bil Khuruji min at tabiat wa tawadju ilil atharat was tidraki il fayitit. The first one is Al Khuruj is to exit yourself, to get yourself out of the tabiat. At tabiat is the consequences of one's sins the outcome of the sins the 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 results of the sins the punishments of the sins um, meaning that the sins when a person committed a sin there might be rights that has to be fulfilled to the people if the sin involves another human being or uh, the person has to repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by a kafara by something so basically to do what has been mentioned before in the subject of a tawbah so to to uh, to be completely detached from any uh, effect of the sin and that is by perfecting the tawbah okay in all what that means and fulfilling the ahkam and the rulings of the tawbah and it's mandatory for us to learn to learn these ahkam these rulings of the tawbah repentance and if a person doesn't have the knowledge is to ask the people of knowledge how to repent from this sin, how to repent from another sin, and so on. So this is al-khuruj min al-tabi'at, because if if we're talking about inaba to return to Allah, it's like hijrah. When you make hijrah, you don't leave any uh, thing behind. So when a person returns to Allah from shirk, from sin, from bid'ah, he needs to make sure that what he came from is already, he's completely detached from it. So this is basically what it means. The second one is, Uh, which means to uh, feel the pain of al-atharat and al-atharat is the shortcomings or the things that a person slipped in which is the sin to feel the pain of it um, and the pain here is not a physical pain but it's a pain in the heart which is a sign 
that his inaba, his return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is true, uh, which is different than someone else does not have any um, guilt, a feel of guilt that he, you know, was away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, so this is a sign that his heart is still corrupted or even might be a dead heart. So this is one meaning of al-atharat. Al-atharat is one of two things, either for oneself, when you your own shortcomings, so you feel that pain, that regret, and it's a healthy way, of course, not in a way that a person become in disparity from the mercy of Allah. The second meaning of uh, or having the, the pain of the shortcomings or the, the sins is that a person would feel the pain and the guilt for the sin of his brother, the sin of his Muslim brother when he slips away. And this is a high level of purity of one's heart. He says, as if you are the one that slipped away. He does not make shamata. He's not happy for his Muslim brother that he committed a sin or he deviated from the true path. There's this silliness and this uh, sad reality that we all witness nowadays in this life. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to purify us from it. When someone is waiting for his brother's shortcomings or search for his sins or mistakes and as if he just... Uh, you know, got the best and the greatest attainment that his brother had slipped away. It's supposed to be the total opposite. And there's difference between advising nasiha and correcting or even warning against someone that has deviated from the true path uh, with sincerity, with truthfulness. But at the same time, it hurts the, the, the believer's heart when they see someone deviated, someone slipped away because this is one ummah and it's like one body so if one part of it is detached or in pain or wounded or sick or whatever, you know, the entire body is in, uh, is in uh, pain. As the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, that this ummah, al-mu'min al-mu'min kal-jasad, the believer to the believer is like one body. If one part of your body is ishtaka, that means it's sick, the rest of the body will suffer from uh, fever and pain so, and this is, um, again, I mean, we need to stress these meanings and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to purify our hearts. And this is the evidence of the softness of the heart of the believer. That he has that pain in his heart when someone else slips away or deviate from the truth. So to have that. And he says, the third one is وَاسْتِدْرَاكِ الْفَائِتَتْ الْفَائِتَتْ is what a person missed. So to make up for the things that has been missed when you're away from Allah and you meet the never, you know, how long you've been away. And that, that, that time of one's life, which is such a precious time, you know, how many people had surpassed you and did all kinds of good deeds. How many people now at this moment, they are reading Quran or making Salah or taking advantage of their life, enjoying good, forbidding evil, learning the deen, doing all kinds of good deeds. Right, and a person is just wasting his time. So when a person repents to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and return with the with the state of our inaba, he also has to think about how to fix this uh, this time that he wasted or was in state of sin or away from the obedience of Allah, away from being close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if you missed something, that means your actions has to be even more than those who did not miss like you. And to continue like this till the end of one's life. So if you, and the example that has been mentioned before, if two people had a, a ladder or, you know, they're going up into a ladder one step after the other next to each other, one stopped and the other one kept going. And there's a limited time where, you know, they have to reach or he has to, it's a, it's a race. So if the one that stopped to rest or whatever, uh, then he realized what, what I was doing. I need to catch up. What does he do? The other person, you know, next to him, he's going in the same pace. But that person, when he realized that he stopped, he has to go faster. He has to put more effort. He has to be more, with, get more effort so that he can catch up with his, with the one that already surpassed him. So this is what istidraq al fa'itat means. That if a person repents and returns to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then he needs to, you know, after fixing the issue of the sins, making up salawat, making this and that, then it's also to increase of the good deeds to one's best ability. 
so that he would make up for these days that he wasted in the forgetfulness and the heedlessness and being away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he said, especially towards the end of one's life, and nobody knows when is the end of one's life, which is the entire life. So uh, he says, فَبَقِيَّةُ عُمُرِ الْمُؤْمِنِ لَا قِيمَةَ لَهَا يَسْتَدْرِكُ بِهَا مَا فَاتْ وَيُحْيِ بِهَا مَا أَمَتْ So the rest of our life. So let's look at our life now. From now on, till the rest of our life, it has no value to it unless we basically what um, to uh, to make up for the days before that we wasted and to revive what we had already uh, wasted or cause it to uh, to as if it's if it's dead actions that is not there anymore to revive it and to fix what has been missed. And all of that is according to the Sunnah, the way of the Prophet والسلام, with, with good expectations, with having the good thinking about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is how to have the proper fiqh and understanding of how to return to Allah. The words are very nice, very clear, but then what is left is to be truthful and to start to implement this in our life. So again, three things, al-khuruj min al-tabi'at, to exit, to be detached from the outcome of the sins by perfectly repenting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and at and having this feel of guilt or pain when it comes to the shortcomings of, of oneself or others and and to make up for the days or the years or the time that has been missed in the disobedience of Allah or in the ghafla uh, and this uh, life and it's how precious it is so that we don't waste it and we are very uh, experts sometimes to waste one another uh, time and life you know if a person wastes his life he also might waste other people's life by wasting it in, in sins or forgetfulness and and so on then after that he'll talk about something else about it would continue the same subject of how to make that rujua or returning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the covenant of Allah as mentioned before, how to do that with also other three things. So we'll stop here inshallah and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, to make us among those who are always in that state of inaba and to make us benefit from what we hear. In barakallahu fikum. Inshallah in a few minutes we'll have the Quran class inshallah. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.